stock straight ranged but firm ahead of the FNO expiry, weekly expiry. Auto as well as consumer durables clocked some gains while industrials dragged today. Mid caps outperformed. The IT department flags unaccounted cash sales by a company of over 1,000 crores following search operations at, it, at its premises and at those of its authorised dealers. The report sources tell CNBC TV 18 are on Polycap. The news triggers a sharp slide in the stock. Hero Motor Corp is likely to showcase a range of premium products at its innovation centre in Jaipur later this month to expand its presence in the faster-growing segments. The expectation drives up the stock today. And analysts don't expect any positive cues from TCS and Infosys earnings today with many anticipating a cut in full year guidance from Infosys and a flattish performance from TCS in what is usually a seasonally soft quarter. Hello and welcome uh, to Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar. As always with me is my co-anchor Pavitra Parekh. Pavitra, stock is, stocks are really holding on, at least the key indices, despite being an FNO weekly expiry day. But yes, tentative in a very tight range. Let's take stock of the market at lunch. Are then Nifty 50 holding on to the 21,600 level? Quite effectively, 0.2% gain at this point. Sensex 2 is with about 0.2% uh, uh, gain at the moment. Bank Nifty is showing a slight outperformance to the key indices and mid cap universe that is really taking the cake today in the market showing enough resilience and buying interest over half a percent up on that and that is also impacting the overall market you know breadth as well as uh, the strength of the market so advanced decline ratio heavily in favor of the advances and on uh, on uh, looking at the sectoral play, well, autos are really taking uh, the shine in the market today with Hero Motor Corp with news developments leading the pack with over 5% gain in the trading session. So, Pavitra, a lot uh, to happen in the trading session today, but at the moment, holding on with the gains. Oh, absolutely. And in line with what we saw globally as well. I mean, you have a Nikai market which is up, you know, 600 points. So, right at the out outset, we knew that this would uh, start off as a good session. It's positive that it's holding on well as well. Uh, in addition to Hero, you have a lot of the other auto names also doing well. So, names like Bajaj, Aisha will all be up on your screen. So, doing pretty well there. Reliance was a big mover in the last hour of trade yesterday. Once again today, it's contributing a lot to the gains that you're seeing on the Nifty. A lot of the banking stocks also today are doing well. So, names like Axis are doing well. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot happening in smaller, uh, in the broader markets, right? So, names like MRPL, Chennai, Petro. Those will come up for you. You can see the kind of move that you're seeing over here, 11 to 16 percent on those stocks. They have a lot of the jewelry makers, the smaller jewelry makers, which once again are piling onto the gains that we've seen earlier in the week as well. But on the downside, you have a lot of news flow names like Polycap, Sulking in Trade and taking with it KEI, RR Cable, all of these in focus. I do want to point out that Nifty IT has moved into the red right now. You have two big weights declaring results today. That's TCS and Infosys. Uh, the index has fallen around 330 points from the highs of the day. But let's see uh, what comes out of the results. No big guns really expected from both of those earnings today. But let's kickstart the show now by talking about Polycab. It is clearly the stock of the day and has hit a lower circuit, 20% as well, because sources have told us that the income tax department conducted searches at IT premises in Mumbai. So Tim C is joining us with more details on this. Tim C. Well, the income tax department in a press statement last evening said that it had initiated search and seizure operations against a group engaged in the manufacturing of wires and cables and other electrical items. On 22nd December, search also covered some of the authorized distributors of the group and over 50 premises located in Mumbai, Pune, Aurangabad, Nasik, Daman, Halol and Delhi were part of the operation. Sources say that the group in reference here is Polycab and as per the statement, IT department claims that the flagship company has made unaccounted cash sales of around 1,000 crore rupees, which are not recorded in the books of accounts. Evidences of unaccounted cash payments of more than 400 crores made by a distributor on behalf of the flagship company towards purchases of raw materials have also been seized. Further, non-genuine expenses in the nature of subcontracting expenses 
purchases and transport expenses, etc., aggregating to about 100 crore rupees, have also been identified in the seized evidences from the premises of the flagship company. The search action also resulted in determination of unexplained transactions undertaken by the distributor for issuing bills without genuine goods being supplied, whereas such goods have been sold in the open market in cash. Thus, the authorized distributor facilitated certain parties to initiate their purchase accounts, which aggregated to about 500 crore rupees. This distributor exclusively sells products of the flagship company. The, gov the government has also claimed that during the course of search operations, unaccounted cash exceeding 4 crore rupees has been seized and more than 25 bank lockers have been put to restrain. Further investigations are in process. And just to remind our viewers, the company has not been named by the government. But yes, sources say that it is regarding Polycab. So let's see what is the final tax due that the company has to pay and how soon the demand is raised. Back to you. Thanks so much, Tim C, for getting us all those important details coming in. Source based uh, on Polycab, and that stock has no let up in sight, uh, down about 20% in trade. But another sector which is uh, the focus of the day, and also remember it effectively kickstarts our earnings season for this particular quarter, is the IT sector. And let's uh, talk about big earnings from there. IT Bellwether TCS is due to report its. So Q3 numbers later today and Reema Tendulkar, our in-house IT expert, gets us all the key expectations. Reema, what are we expecting from TCS today? Well, in terms of numbers, very, very quiet and muted. So for TCS, the dollar revenue is actually likely to decline by 0.2%, could be flat on a constant currency basis. And the range of expectation is fairly wide. Uh, constant currency revenue growth range, according to analysts, could either go down by minus 1%, though there are a few who believe that there will be some growth in the top line. So what will be the factors weighing on the growth numbers? One, the macro environment has been weak, discretionary spends have been under pressure, and plus Q3 typically has furloughs, but this time, due to weak macros, the furloughs could be more than higher. But offsetting that, to some extent, will be the large $1 billion deal with BSNL, which will start contributing to the top line. EBIT margin seen flat at 24.3%, bottom line seen flat, uh, but remember, at the absolute bottom line, the company has said that they will be making a provision of $125 million in relation to the Epic case. Now, what will you track? Uh, you will track commentary. Uh, the TCS management has been very reserved about giving you a forward-looking guidance, but any, you know, the body language, uh, any signs that there are green shoots in the macro environment, discretionary spending uh, will start improving. Also, this ramp up of this BSNL project, because while it will contribute to the top line, the fear is that it could compress margins. Also, the large deal wins for the industry have been on the muted side. Now, in the last three months, the stock has been up about 3 to 4 percent. In the last one year, it's seen a rally of 16 to 17 percent, pegging its valuations at 27 times forward multiple. All right, so that is on TCS, and you can catch the management CEO, K. Kritivasan, addressing the media at 5.30 p.m. today. Uh, this is after their earnings results do come out at 5.30 on CNBC TV 18. But uh, Rima Infosys is the other big one that is going to report results today. Of course, we're not expecting, you know, much from Infosys either, but take us through the numbers. Well, for Infosys, there could be a revenue contraction. So dollar revenue is seen down 1.8% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Even in constant currency terms, revenues could decline 1.5% to 2%. Margins for the company could also shrink uh, by about 80 basis points to 20.4% because of wage hikes, which are effective 1st of November. Profits, therefore, could see a little bit of a contraction, 3% down. Now, there is a possibility we could have a guidance cut by Infi. The current guidance is for 1% to 2.5% top-line growth. The upper end of the guidance of 2.5% could be trimmed to 2%. So, 1% to 2% could be the new guidance. If that takes place, this will be the third guidance cut by the company. It had started the year with 4 to 7% growth. And ultimately, we're looking at a very low single-digit kind of growth number for Infi. Uh, margins guidance is likely to be maintained at 2022. Well, uh, in terms of management commentary and the focus, it will be on the macro as the demand environment. But apart from that, even the senior level exits have concerned the street. And secondly, uh, there was this cancellation of a large $1.5 billion MOU 
with a global client. It wasn't a signed TCB, but it was a large MOU cancellation. Uh, so the reason for that will be asked by the investor community. Back to you. All right, so that was Reema Tendulkar giving us the synopsis of what's in store for a tech-heavy second half and it will also give an indication for the entire earnings cycle for this particular quarter. So watch out for that. We'll slip into a short breather on the show when we return. The US SEC approves the rule to allow creation of Bitcoin ETF. More updates on that story on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Business Lunch. Now, in a big regulatory boost for cryptocurrencies, the US SEC has approved the creation of spot Bitcoin ETFs. Manisha is here to tell us more. Manisha, long, long awaited by the crypto community. Oh, well, absolutely. And this is the moment that the, uh, the, the asset class and perhaps the sector has been waiting for for many, many years. Well, remember, you, the, the trading in Bitcoin futures ETF already has been on. So spot is something that the street was waiting for. Now, with this coming in, with this approval coming in and, and the point that the trading could begin, perhaps, or the listing could happen as early as today itself, as soon as U.S. opens, clearly has had the cryptocurrencies trading in the positive there. We are looking at a new March 2022 high when it comes to Bitcoin. That is the reason the anticipation of this that you have Bitcoin gaining up by nearly 70% since the month of October. When you look at the market capital itself, that's holding at around $950 billion at this point in time. And we have seen across cryptocurrencies gain up in last two to three months in anticipation of exactly this. Now, what this does is that it opens up the market for uh, institutional investors, for as a structural finance product, and also for retail as well. And this would be an exposure in a regulatory environment. Until now, you had to perhaps open a digital wallet or trade in various uh, not regulated exchanges but this definitely takes care of all of those things as well having said that the US SEC also has said that by doing this they're not endorsing cryptocurrencies there is still a lot of uncertainty and risks when it comes to this going forward now the markets are now looking at a Bitcoin halving event which will happen in April 2024 with this it opens up way for perhaps an ether spot uh, ETF as well that's something that the markets will watch out for uh, when you look at the volumes itself well, that is expected to be quite large. When you look at the Standard Chartered Report or various banks reporting on this, they're anticipating a 50 to $55 billion worth of inflows now coming in for these ETFs. We all do understand that there were 11 ETF applications and there have been big names like BlackRock and Grayscale, Franklin Templeton. So there are these applications and the markets are anticipating that as soon as US opens today, you could be looking at listing a few of these. One uh, big thing to watch is that this is still very fragmented. What we have seen come is coming from from US only for US so other countries really still awaiting uh, for more regulations and more financial products to this sense all right Manisha thanks for giving us all the details about this uh, big event in the Bitcoin as well as the crypto industry a lot of interest is building in that one let's Welcome back. You're watching Business Lunch. And as we wind down on this uh, bulletin this afternoon, let's talk about the world of entertainment. Well, Shah Rukh Khan was awarded the Indian of the Year at CNN News 18 Indian of the Year Awards 2023. Now, the Badshah of Bollywood had a stellar 2023 with three blockbusters and his contributions towards helping acid attack victims through the Mir Foundation as well. Now, King Khan managed to breach the 1,000 crore rupees collection club and revive Bollywood from its recent slump. Listen in to Shah Rukh Khan. It's with big gratitude. It's not a comeback. It is actually a reiteration of the fact that I belong and I should continue to act and not learn pasta and pizza. <laughs> and that can wait. It was, it was really bad times and, you know, they call it the post-pandemic time when uh, theatres were running empty, specifically the Hindi-speaking theatres. And yes, we had some wonderful people who are sending us to Ch Chand and Moon and also making films here in Hindi now, the guys from the South. And uh, yes, they do make larger-than-life films. Uh, Hindi films perhaps had started making cinema, which was a little more middle of the road. But there is now a youthful audience 
out in the country. You know, we are one of the youngest or the youngest country in the world. Yeah. And I guess they just want things which are bigger, better, faster, superior, over the top, and maybe a little noisy <laughs> and uh, happier, you know. And middle of the road, real cinema may have, because, you know, this was years of uh, films which were lying in the cans, had to come down post-COVID. So I think now we are finding the groove in Hindi cinema.